Hello Accounting 101 students. In this video, we're going to go over how to prepare the statement of comprehensive income using the question four in our chapter 13 end of chapter practice questions. So this is question number four. And in this problem, we have Traer Corporation that has income from continuing operations of 424,000. But they also have a few items that we are given, and this is before considering income taxes. So when it comes to the statement of comprehensive income, we have to present some of our items net of taxes. So that's one of the things that you wanna pay attention to as you're preparing the partial statement of comprehensive income. And this is a, a statement that is prepared for the year ended, and it starts off with the income from continuing operations, which in this problem, we're being told that the income from continuing operations is $424,000. So now we're gonna read through the things that happened um, during the year. So this company has a unrealized loss of 60,300 on available for sale securities. So that means that they have some securities, some investments that they own, and they have them classified as available for sale. So at any point in time, they can sell these investments, but they actually haven't sold them but for the purposes of disclosing um, important financial information within the annual report, a company prepares this statement of comprehensive income to give the investors and some creditors some insight as to what's going on in that business. So this unrealized loss is going to be included um, in the bottom part of the statement. So this statement has a few sections. It starts off with the income from continuing operations. If there are any discontinued operations, the gains and losses would be included in that section. Then um, you'll have your net income or your net loss after considering any discontinued operations. And then the second section that we have on the bottom is called other comprehensive income. And the item that is most commonly included here is the unrealized gain or loss on available for sale securities. So in this problem, we have an unrealized loss of 60,300. But you might be tempted to include in that amount in this area of the problem. But one of the things that you want to consider is that this statement um, notes that there are some items that need to be presented net of, of income taxes. So we actually have to take out the 19% tax rate um, before we report this item. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and do the math. So we're going to be taking for the unrealized holding loss on the available for sale securities, the 60,300 that's given in the problem times 19%, and that gives me 11,457. Once I have that number, I'm going to take the 60,300 minus the amount for tax, and that will give me 48,843 and this is the amount I'm gonna be including in my problem. So this unrealized loss is going to be subtracted. Okay. And it's the statement itself that tells you, um, you have to read through the description to understand that this would be subtracted. It's not like it's a negative number, it's gonna be presented um, just as a number but it's because you know that it's a loss, that's why you know you're going to take your net income and subtract this amount to get to the last piece of this, which will be comprehensive income. 
So let's read the next part of this problem, keeping in mind that our main goal is to get to the comprehensive income at the bottom of the statement. So this company had a gain of 33,400 on the discontinuance of a division. So now we wanna know, well, is this gain related to when we got rid of like the assets of that division? Or is there some amount of loss that occurred um, within the operations that led to the decision of discontinuing this, this, this division? So if a company looks at all of their divisions and they kind of think, okay, well, we're selling X, Y, and Z. It seems like we're doing good on X. It seems like we're doing good on Y, but on product Z, it seems that we're actually losing money. So why are we selling this product if we're losing money? Let's get rid of this product or this division or this um, location so that way we don't have to deal with this loss. So a lot of times when you discontinue operations, um, you're going to have a loss from your operations. So that'll be one component. The other component is you'll get rid of some assets so you might have a gain when you dispose of those assets. So now you want to clarify the dollar amounts, but once again, you wanna be net of that 19% tax rate. So for the loss from operations, we're going to take the 7,300, so we're gonna take this 7,300 and we're gonna multiply that by 90%. So this will give us our tax amount. Once we have that tax amount, we'll take the full 7,300 minus the tax amount and that will give you the amount net of taxes that's going to be subtracted because it's a loss from our operations. Okay. Then we're going to look at our gain from disposal. We are going to have a $40,700 gain from the disposal. That's a pretty good gain, right? Um, but on this gain from disposal, we also need to take away the tax effect. So we're gonna take away the 19% tax. And once we take away the 19% tax, by taking the dollar amount of the gain times 19%, that'll give us our tax amount. Then we take the full amount of the gain minus the tax amount, and that will give us the amount that we're going to report on this statement. So the gain from disposal is gonna be added. Next, you're gonna do a little subtotal. So with the subtotal, negative 5,913 plus 32,967, that will net out to 27,054. So we're gonna add this amount to our continuing operations. So now our net income is 451,054. Okay, so 451,054 minus that unrealized holding loss on the available for sale securities, that will give us our comprehensive income which in this example is going to be 402,211. So you'll notice that this particular statement, um, it considers some additional factors. We wanna know what's our income from continuing operations versus um, the effect of the discontinued operations, because we wanna know that the discontinued operations are not going to continue into the future. Um, and then we want to look at, well, what if we were to sell the securities? What would be the effect on our income? 
And that's one of the reasons why this is referred to as comprehensive income. I highly recommend reading through the textbook and looking at the student review slides for some additional examples for comprehensive income. And you'll really have to look at the annual reports for some companies to find um, examples of comprehensive income. And this is a really interesting area for you guys to review further. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video.